This video is sponsored by EMC and Compliance International 2024. Discover our conference, training, and trade show. Visit our website for details. Today, we're going to do a very quick demonstration of a break on the PCB or gap on the PCB ground. I borrowed this demonstration idea from experts uh, such as Doug Smith and Ken Wyatt. Um, you can find their video clips on the show notes. So the idea is very simple. This represents a two-layer PCB where we have a ground layer and then we have two traces running over uh, the ground. The only difference between these two is that, as you can see clearly, is that for this trace we have a gap or break on the ground plane, where this trace actually has a uh, continuous ground. Both traces at one end are terminated with 50 ohm resistor, the other end are just BNC connectors. For this demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate the immunity performance between the two configurations. Um, therefore, the BNC connectors are actually connected to the 50 ohm impedance of channel 1 and channel 3 of this oscilloscope. As I said before, both Ken Wyatt and Doug Smith demonstrated the problem with this gap on the PCB. Ken's approach is to demonstrate the problem from the emission point of view, while Doug Smith was using a near-field probe and injecting noise uh, close to the trays and then see the uh, noise from this uh, input. Doug Smith also wrote an article where he was using a spark generator such as this one to demonstrate the ESD impact. But he didn't make a YouTube video out of it as far as I know. So today I'm going to do the uh, video demonstration of this. And the idea is very simple, right? Um, the noise source in this case is a spark generator. And as you can see, I made this spark generator uh, from uh, a barbecue spark generator um, I bought from Amazon, which is, uh, you know, uh, under 10 US dollars. And all I made is to make two small copper plates, pretty much like a dipole antenna. The uh, distance between these two points actually I kept it as small as possible as I can. When I energize the device, there's a spark generated at the tip of this uh, uh, copper. And this really simulates what we call indirect ESD event. Why indirect? Because this you can treat as a ESD simulator, but because of the length of the um, copper, as we explained, this is almost like a perfect dipole half wavelength antenna. Therefore, it simulates a scenario where you have an ESD event and then the radiate the emission of that ESD event can propagate quite far. Okay. And as I said, right, so if I press it, you can you can really see the, the sparks here and you can already see the noise on the oscilloscope, right? See that? You can see that uh, spark really here right and then now i just move it you can see it clearly right you let me zoom in you can see that both channels have 500 millivolts per division right same division the purple trace is the result for the trace without uh, gapped ground okay but but the trace where there's a gapped ground underneath it generates a voltage. You can treat this as an interference voltage with a much larger amplitude compared with the ungapped ground. And you can easily see, right, this is more than 10 times um, in terms of the voltage amplitude. So from the immunity point of view, we know that if you have a design where you have a gap on the ground, such as this, with any external uh, noise such as ESD, EFT burst, or continuous wave, you are certainly going to see voltage which is a lot higher than you would expect on this uh, gapped ground. And, and this impact can even see uh, from two meters, three meters distance. Okay, so I can I can do a I can move this antenna much farther away 
and I can still see this pretty obviously, right? This is about one meter from the demonstration unit, and you can still see the uh, the noise. Obviously, moving closer, then is is much more severe, as you can see. Okay, so hopefully this small demonstration shows you that you cannot really do anything like this on your PCB design. Okay.